Hey, everyone. We're getting ready to start. Uh, I appreciate everybody being here at the first of Microsoft's talks here at this year's GDC. It was uh, 15 years ago, year 2000, at GDC, where we uh, announced the original Xbox. And in many ways, I look at this GDC as the most important GDC for Microsoft since that date. No, not because we're announcing a new console, not because of any games I'm going to announce today, but really since that time, this is the first time that all of Microsoft's efforts in gaming will show up with one unified voice, with one unified vision around what we want to do and the impact we want to have on the games industry. And hopefully, at the end of all of our 15 talks, uh, we, you will see what we would like to do uh, and bring to gamers and game developers around the world. So um, it's great to be kicking this off, the beginning of the 15 sessions. Short little story on this one, it was, uh, it was funny, because you can imagine, as we're getting all the sessions together, uh, we're sitting around all of the speakers and we're talking about what we're gonna say to make sure we don't say things that cross each other, uh, and then we're, how we kinda, we're all cohesive in our, our messages. And uh, what I understood from the people who were doing the rest of the talks that, that my talk is kind of the executive high-level speak before the real technical people give you the real insight on what we're really doing. Uh, and that was uh, kind of freely shared in the room. I appreciated the openness and the candor of my team as they shared with me the, the kind of role I have up here. But anyway, hopefully we, we can, uh, I'll overachieve on that goal. Uh, but definitely, uh, we, as always, we're gonna appreciate your feedback at the end of the sessions and what we have to say as we share our vision throughout the week. Uh, I think it's uh, an incredible time to be here at GDC uh, and definitely a great time for us at Microsoft as we bring our, our gaming vision together. I was thinking about this year's GDC and, and what was exciting that I saw. And I, I've lived in this industry for quite a while. And I remember when I'd come to GDC and there seemed to be always a kind of a meme that many people were chasing. And over the last, five, six years, those memes always seem to be about some form of monetization where everybody's got to rush to do Facebook games or mobile games or free-to-play games. One of the things that strikes me this year, which I think is great for our industry, is the fact that you see successful games across all of these business models. You don't see people having to run and try to chase and get their pitch together on why they have the next best free-to-play game. You see success in download to own games, you see successful games at retail, you clearly see some hugely successful free-to-play games, and mobile remains as strong as ever. As an industry, as people who want to create content that we want millions and millions of people around the globe to love, I think the diversity in the business models that are working so well in our industry right now is a real strength. And definitely as we, we think about our vision at Microsoft for gaming, we're trying to embrace that. We understand that flexibility for you with the games that you're building, the tools that and services that we can bring to bear there uh, is really the key. How do we let you service your customers, stay in touch with your customers, easily get products to your customers as fast as you can? That is critical. Uh, and I, some people know I, I spent most of my career inside of the Xbox organization running Microsoft Studios, our first party organization. And definitely, as we've been looking at our Microsoft gaming vision, I've come at it from the lens of somebody who's trying to create content and trying to create content in today's world where people pick up so many different devices to play games. Uh, they want to engage with you as a community, you the creator. They want to know that you have a relationship with the customers who are playing the games. They want to know that their voices are heard. They want to play while they're waiting in line for the bus. They want to play when they're at school. They want to play your games when they're sitting in front of their big TV uh, with their headphones on or whatever they're doing to just be completely immersed and blown away. Or obviously something that's incredibly exciting at this year's E3, uh, the advent of VR. And it seems coming at us from so many different ways, a completely immersive gaming experience, VR and augmented reality. As always, the game industry sits at the forefront of many technological uh, advances and in the areas of VR and AR, we're, we're doing it again. And, and it's great to see all the work that these companies are doing uh, in that space. So just in general, I'm very upbeat about this year's GDC. It seems like it's become more about the content, more about the content reaching those customers. And hopefully with the work that we're doing, we have a role to play there. 
before we get into uh, the meat of what I'm going to say, I had a, a, an announcement I wanted to make. You know, there's a, a game I, I, we just launched called uh, Scream Ride. People might have seen it from our partners at, at Frontier that's doing well. It's great to see the reaction to it early on. But we have a long relationship with Frontier. Uh, and as, as Dave Braben and us were talking about the future of what we could do together, they have a game that actually plays a real kind of important role in, in my world of gaming, this, this game called Elite Dangerous, that if people know Elite from the, uh, the original game, that was a game that was pretty important and foundational to me to just falling in love with games. And it's great to actually be able to stand here and announce a partnership with them uh, to bring Elite Dangerous, making its debut, its console debut exclusively on Xbox this summer. Uh, it's a game that I'm incredibly excited to play, to be able to bring to Xbox. Uh, you'll hear more about this in the future, but I thought just on the heels of us shipping a game together, uh, it was a great time to take the opportunity and stand up and yet again celebrate the relationship we have with Frontier and a game that's, uh, I think, going to be a, a great game to come to console, and, and we're incredibly excited to partner with, uh, with Frontier on this game. So let me talk about our vision for gaming. And this will be foundational to everything we say this week. We obviously have a strength in gaming on console with Xbox, and we have strong competitors in Nintendo and Sony in that space. And it's great to see the successes that Sony's having, the innovation and success Nintendo continues to have with their first party and the work that they're doing. And obviously us at Xbox, we're trying really hard, and uh, we're, we're a player in that space, and it's, it's great. But our goal in gaming at Microsoft is to allow people to play games wherever they are. And we understand that people love to play games on television. And console with its capability around instant on, its uh, robustness as a consumer electronics device, and frankly the role it plays in the household with a big 60 inch plasma on the wall allowing somebody to play just high fidelity games with a ton of people in the room is pretty important to millions and millions of people. And this generation of consoles I think is showing that. But at the same time, we know that there are billions of people that play games across all devices. And today, the worlds are, si are segmented. You don't have linkage, really, between the different places that your customers are playing their games. So as we've made this evolution with Windows, and as we've thought about our vision for gaming, the thing you should keep in your head is I think about our customers as customers on Xbox Live. And I think about those customers moving from screen to screen and what we want to bring to those people is an understanding that the games you own are the games you own, and you're able to play those games on any device that you want to play them. You're able to bring your social network of friends together. You want to be able to use the input that you want to use to play the game that you want to play. And if you want to play on your laptop, if you want to play on your desktop rig, if you want to play on your television, if you want to play on your phone, it's a world that we want to enable across all Windows 10 devices, including the Xbox, and we're extremely committed to what happens on the television, but we know as game developers, it's critically important for you to be able to reach those gamers wherever they are. We understand that the console plays an important role in that, and I think the role of gaming on the television, as I said, is critical to the long-term success for all of us, but clearly the success we see in PC today is an important component for all of us as we build the games that we're building and mobile in so many different places that people come together. My role as head of Xbox inside of Microsoft is really head of gaming. And to be talking about what games can mean in the Windows ecosystem to the leadership at the highest levels inside the company. And I'm coming up on a year in my role and it's been a great dialogue with the company about how gaming was once central to what we did on Windows. But we've kind of lost our way and now, with the, what we're doing on Windows 10 and the fact that as, it, as Xbox and as gaming, we're able to play a front seat role in the crafting of what our platform is going to be able to do, my hope is the end result will be a Windows release that's the best release we've ever had for gamers when Windows 10 comes out. And for our Xbox customers out there, they will see it as an additive experience to what they're able to do on the console and really rounding out their full gaming experience across every screen they sit down on. The reaction to the company's been great. I was obviously able to, to scrounge up some pennies to buy this thing called Minecraft, uh, which is allowing us to really prove out 
that games and people touch these games on so many different devices is actually a strength of the service showing the strength of the content. When you look at something like Minecraft and what it means on YouTube and what it means on so many of the other social channels, the company is, understands what gaming can mean as an accelerant for what we're trying to do on devices, what we're trying to do on platform, and what we're trying to do on service. And that's critical to us. So as the gaming group, our job is to enable a platform that could bring more and more Minecrafts to bear that you're gonna build and make sure that the tools we're delivering enable that kind of success for everybody in this room, assuming the games you're building reach the same level of success. We have a unified vision for gaming and game development in the company and our week here at, U at GDC is to share with you where we see the future. The feedback is gonna be critical. Everything's not right. There are areas that you'll ask questions about where I'll fumble on answers. Uh, you'll ask people uh, questions about things we haven't thought of. And I think that's critical as we bring our service, which I call Windows and Xbox Live, forward and make sure it's the best platform for you as you're creating your games. I'm gonna take a second and go back to uh, January 21st. If people remember January 21st was this big Windows event. They let the crazy Xbox person stand up in the middle of the Windows event and talk about gaming. And, and we shared some features that we thought were interesting as part of Windows 10, but were really just a kickoff for our focus on all of gaming across all of our platforms. We showed the Xbox app and extending what people do on the Xbox Live for every Windows 10 customer. We showed game DVR, we showed cross-device multiplayer with Fable, we showed game streaming. But as I said, it really was just the beginning. But what you can take away from that, it was the beginning of the company recognizing how important this form of entertainment is to the success of the core platform to the entire Microsoft business model. And the fact that we were there and the fact that we were telling our story on par with Windows and Office and Internet Explorer was all just an understanding and hopefully a d ex uh, display of how important you are to what we see as the success that we're trying to have. With Windows 10, I believe we'll be able to bring one core operating system, one application platform, one gaming social network, one store, and one ingestion path across all Windows devices, allowing you to get access to the billions of customers out there that'll have these devices in the easiest and most efficient way possible, and probably most important today, stay engaged with those customers after they've purchased or downloaded your game. I wanna start with the Windows Universal App Platform. The Universal App Platform is there to enable you, and we're gonna have some examples that you'll see both here and throughout the week, to create one game that effectively runs across multiple devices. Now we understand that input, output modality, and other things are gonna require and ask that you actually have special cases for certain display situations or input situations, but the core mechanic of what you're building, you'll actually be able to deploy across the whole Windows 10 ecosystem, including Xbox. We wanna make it extremely easy for you to bring your content to all of those devices, and as I said, stay connected to all of those customers. When we think about the size and the scale of the opportunity, when we have Windows 10, with as we announced a free upgrade for the first year for all of those customers, and including all of the other devices, Xbox there, you're really creating an ecosystem that is massive for you to deploy your games to. And the fact that you're able to do this with one application platform across all of these devices, we think is an efficiency for you in building your application, but probably equally as important, a way for you, as I said, to kind of make sure the core mechanic, the core social and engagement and retention tools that you're putting in your game are consistent across all of these screens. There's gonna be a session right after my session here, uh, which will be about developing games on Windows 10. And Don Box from our platform team and Chris Tector from Turn 10, you guys do Forza, will talk more about developing games on Windows 10 and that's where the real technical people will tell you more detail. Obviously, once you've built your game, it's incredibly important for you to be able to sell your game. Our investment in Windows Store has never been higher than it is right now. We obviously brought a Windows Store to market with Windows 8. 
but I don't think any of us right now are looking at the money that's being made in the Windows 8 store and kind of counting that as a huge success, including us. We understand in any digital store ecosystem, games have to be the number one form of entertainment. They are on every other consumer electronics device out there, and we understand in Windows 10 that has to be the case in our store as well. Number one form of monetized content on any platform, number one form of engagement on any platform is usually games. And we want that true to be, with, to be true with Windows 10, and the Windows Store will be a really important part of that. You will be able to de develop and deploy your games across the full Windows device ecosystem through that one store, including Xbox, including PC, and including phone. We have the Windows Store today in over 240 markets. And we have over 80 mobile operators with payment instruments for all of those customers allowing you to sell your content through our store to millions and millions of, of customers, again, across all those devices. There's more for us to say in the store, and you'll hear more as the games come out, or as the store is built. And the store itself, just so you're clear, is an application in Windows, which means that it will actually evolve faster than Windows does. It will be on a, a refresh cycle similar to what you will do with your games and anybody else will do any, with any other application. So the feedback loop that we get from you on the tools that you need to best monetize in our store is gonna be critical because we wanna stay nimble in the store and make sure we're developing the right tools, uh, techniques, and methodologies for you to get the most out of the store that we have. One of the features that we think can be unique for us across, definitely across PC and console, is the ability for developers to enable cross-buy and cross-use scenarios. We showed cross-platform play in January. We showed people playing Fable, what's up? Uh, playing Fable across PC and console. But when you think about the games that are built today, where the engagement and the monetization are so tightly linked, enabling people to buy consumables, buy games on one platform, and get access to them across this whole device ecosystem is an ability that you will have. It's not something that will mandate. You own your content and who gets access to that content. But allowing the store to deploy and give entitlements to people across this whole device spectrum, we think can be a real critical part of you building huge businesses out of the games that you have. It's great to, I'm gonna announce one of our long-term partners, uh, Pinball FX from Zen Studios is coming to Windows 10. And they're gonna be one of the first games to enable you to purchase tables on the PC and use them on Xbox One and vice versa. And for them, it makes total sense. I want more people playing Pinball FX. I wanna make sure I can monetize those customers wherever they are. And using the cross-buy through Xbox Live with the store, with the universal app, we think will really let people reach more and more people. And as I said, the store gives you the tools on how you wanna enable the cross-buy of consumables and core games. We wanna just make that possible and something that we think people will uh, take advantage of. Obviously, it's also critical that your gamers are able to communicate and play. We showed cross-platform play. We'll have cross-platform chat. You'll be able to really think about your whole ecosystem as unified gamers playing together, as well as a base for you to watch as you watch what's happening through the day and what people are doing in your game. All of this comes together, obviously, with the Xbox Live and us bringing the full API set of Xbox Live to Windows. I'm gonna announce that today, we're actually releasing a preview of the Xbox Live SDK to our early adopters. That's happening today, and you'll see some examples of people using Xbox Live to connect their games across platform. Throughout the year, we'll increase the audience of people that get access to the API, but unlike some of our work in the past, in uh, games for Windows Live or something, where we had a subset of what was available on Live given to developers, this is the same Xbox Live team building the same API set, connecting to the same ecosystem across PC and console. We really think it's critical that these user bases are able to stay connected and communicate. I wanna be able to connect to my friends on whatever device I sit down and I decide to play on. And making sure that Xbox Live is accessible to all games, regardless of size, is also really important to us. There's obviously some management that happens and some curation around the Xbox Live API set, but today, as I walk around and I see the indie games and just games that so many different games being built by so many different developers, we understand it's important 
for us to have a Xbox Live that's available to any developer that's out there, uh, regardless of whether they're kind of a managed account with us or just somebody that wants to provide leaderboards and multiplayer uh, and, and the ability to connect with we're friends. We want to make that possible, and we will. Over the next 12 months, we'll have a staged rollout of Xbox Live to more and more endpoints with the full focus on bringing the full API set, the full capability to, uh, to the Windows customers. Later today, we have an Xbox Live SDK talk. And for those of you that are looking some, for some incredible fun, you can come to our booth and play with the Xbox Live SDK in our booth. Uh, but I think what you'll see is a real focus from us to make sure what we've built on console with Xbox Live comes to Windows and really completes the circle of what people are able to do. So we've talked about how people will build applications and those applications can be deployed through the store and you'll be able to connect to those customers uh, through Xbox Live and have them stay connected. When we think about gaming, it's obviously always critical that game developers have the power to create a graphic showcase and deliver the product that will awe your gamers that are out there. You know, DirectX 12, it's critical that we land power and performance and visual fidelity, but it's also really critical that for us that you have this DirectX 12 API that's available across all these devices. Again, trying to make it extremely easy for you to develop one application across all these screens. We've got some great partnerships with our early adopter program. I want to show you uh, some work that we've been doing through the early adopter program with Epic Games now uh, with Unreal Engine 4. So let's roll a video to see the work that's going on. We obviously have a long relationship with Epic. Unreal Tournament's a great game. This is a community-driven development. Some people might know the project at Epic. It's being built out in the open with the help of the community. Uh, with the work that they're doing with DirectX 12, we think it'll set a new visual bar on Windows 10, as Epic has done year in and year out with the great work that they've done. Our partnership with them through the early access program, both for UE4 and uh, Unreal Tournament, it's really going to help for us, learn as a platform and help bring the best visual fidelity to Windows 10 that we can. In January, I talked about some of the CPU improvements we've seen with the same code as we move from DirectX 12, 11 to 12, up to a 50% improvement in some cases, depending on how your game's running and how you're using DirectX 11 today. It's great as we've been working at Lionhead on uh, the next Fable, which is an Unreal game uh, porting it over to DirectX 12, we've actually seen a 20% improvement in GPU utilization on the same hardware. It's really unlocking a ton of performance for our developers, and I think the, you know, the, the future, as always in games, is just getting stronger and stronger in terms of the visual fidelity and realism and tools that developers will have. Unreal Tournament's in the Epic booth. You can come and see it. Uh, Fable Legends and some porting tools are in our booth if you want to come and see how DirectX 12 is working and how teams can start to port their games over from DirectX 11 to DirectX 12. And lastly, which I think is not always the sexiest part of the, the pipeline, but we talk about building applications, we talk about selling applications, we talk about staying connected with all of your users, building power with, uh, with DirectX, comes the Universal Development Center. And your ability to control where your game gets deployed, how you build your game, how you package your game by region, by market, by device. This will all be in one place for all the Windows 10 devices. You will be able to monetize the content that you have in the way that you see fit across all of these screens, not dictated by us, 
N1 portal that you'd be able to go to for your game, whether it's for Xbox, Windows, or even something like HoloLens, as we continue to push out the Microsoft devices uh, and invent new uh, Universal Development Center and the tools that we talk about uh, will be the way that you bring your games to those devices. And I want to take just a second on HoloLens. The reaction after the January event was spectacular. Uh, it's a, a science experiment we've been running inside the halls for quite a while. And it was great to finally be able to stand on stage and show the work that's been done, both on the hardware and the platform and the experiences. I think HoloLens has a ton of uses. You think about some of the enterprise uses, some of the manufacturing line usage. But I know that, again, any consumer electronics device that gets to scales, gaming and entertainment is going to be critical. And our studios, our first party studios, are active today building game entertainment for HoloLens. And you're going to see more of that throughout the year. But we see this as a full Windows 10 device with holographic capability. And we want to make sure, as a first party game organization, we're working to build games to help us craft the device, craft the platform and service that's available, and make sure that when you choose, if you do, to use those tools, uh, that it's all there. If you're interested in the holographic APIs that are part of Windows, please get into the Windows in Insider program. The holographic APIs will be made available as part of the Windows 10 SDK, and you'll get to hear more about uh, what we're doing with HoloLens and the development platform there at our uh, developer uh, conference called Build, which is uh, later in the spring. But none of this matters if we don't have great games. So the platform work that we're doing to help you build the games that we need on our platforms is critical, but we also understand our need uh, and, frankly, our desire to make sure we have great games on our platform. You know, we, we showed Fable. We have talked about Unreal Tournament. Our commitment is to make sure as a first-party games organization, we're committed to all the devices that Microsoft is supporting, all the Windows 10 devices, and that we're working both first party and third party to make sure that we're bringing the best games to those platforms for the gamers that are out there. We understand that's critical to getting those platforms to scale, is to making sure we have the best platform. We've talked about cross-device uh, cross multiplayer. We think that's an enabler for a lot of games. And as we've been talking to, to game developers and the games that they're building about that functionality, there's been a ton of excitement. And I think you'll see more and more about that. And we're getting ready to show you a couple. One of the games that we launched earlier this year that's uh, had a great reaction, it's fun to see all the people playing, uh, is a game called uh, iDarb. I don't know how many people have played iDarb. You've seen this game. Uh, really fun. As we're working with other Ocean Interactive and talking about iDarb and talking about the opportunities with Windows, uh, they made the leap with us. And I'd love to be able to bring Chris Charla from our ID program out, Mike Micah, and Trisha Gray from other Ocean. To, let's talk about what we've done with iDARB and maybe even play some games. Come on up. Hey, Phil. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hello. All right, so we've got iDARB here. We're going to demonstrate cross-play with the Surface and the Xbox. So I'll get this all set up. Great. Well, we got early access to Xbox Live about a month ago, and it took us about a day to get it over to Windows Universal App. It was pretty quick. And then cross-play was about a week? Yeah, it took about a week to get cross-play kicked in. And the rest of the time we just spent actually just um, getting the bugs out of the game that we already had in it. I don't want to admit that really, but here you go, Trish. Oh, sweet. Take this one. Okay. Okay, if we all hold down our start buttons. We'll get in here. My fr I'm playing as Frank. Oh, you mixed it up. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. So if you haven't Ready? heard of iDARB, okay. it's an eight-player eSports game. You just need to get the ball into the goal. It's that easy. Uh, it also has... Like that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come oh, on. Oh. <laughs> It also has Twitch and uh, Twitter integrations where you can hash bomb and really affect the gameplay, which I really like. Do hash yeah, hashtag oh, Becky, my on. favorite. <laughs> Never play a game with the guys who built the game. <laughs> I you know, we practiced. One. I didn't go this hard on them at all. This is awesome. Good. Chris. Good. Trish. You're going the wrong way. Easy picking. <laughs> oh, they're going to score again. <laughs> Brutal. I was trying to set up. What yeah. are you doing? What are you doing? You know what? Yeah. Oh, there yeah. <laughs> and that's how that ends. We won. So we have this game on the show floor at the Microsoft booth. Come on by. If you have any questions about crossplay and what we had to do to get it implemented, it went really fast and it's really easy. Um, ask us every question. Talk to you guys later. Yep. See you. Thanks a lot. Yeah.
Thanks, guys. Hi, everybody. It's been an amazing year for uh, independent developers on Xbox One. We've shipped a ton of ID at Xbox games on console. Uh, we have hundreds of games in development, and more than a thousand independent studios have Xbox One development kits in hand. Today, we're really excited to announce that ID at Xbox is going to be expanding to help developers succeed on Xbox One and Windows 10 so across all its endpoints, including PCs, phones and tablets, even HoloLens. We really think that Windows 10 is going to be an awesome opportunity for independent developers. And uh, we talked to some of them, and uh, let's hear what they have to say. We've got a little video. I think the, the dream over the years for a lot of game developers is that we can actually release a game and engage multiple audiences. When, when Microsoft announced that they're going to actually support cross-play across all their devices, we've heard this before, <laughs> and so it was a, I was a little bit skeptical. But then once we got our hands on, on Windows and, and the APIs and started to fool around with it, it was amazing to see that like it really does work. We work with custom technology. It's our own engine and uh, all the APIs and all the plugins, everything, it's pretty seamless. I was sold on Windows 10 the moment we realized that you can actually copy text from anywhere in Windows and paste it into a command prompt. That, that's, a, that's a miracle in and of itself. From going to Xbox One to Windows 10, uh, it's been amazing that I can just almost just switch the compiler to compile for Windows 10 and it works. It, it's a lot nicer than having to rewrite a majority of low-level code. Crossplay for Blofus Shears and or Seacraft Commander is huge because it's actually a game that plays really well across mouse and keyboard, uh, gamepad and even touchscreen. So what this does is allow us to give the game to everybody and for them to play you know, multiplayer with each other. We've always wanted to allow players to buy a piece of content and play it wherever they are, whether it's on their phone, their Xbox One or their PC. A normal porting process, you would expect like uh, two weeks to four weeks just to get it up and going. And I mean, sh just to say, hey, we had it up and running day one, and you know, 24 hours later, we had it on the store. That's pretty shocking. Now we're thinking of it more uh, like holistically. We're taking the PC player and the console player, and thinking about them together. Microsoft is the only company that's in that position to be able to do that because nobody else has a desktop um, gaming platform and a gaming console platform. It's really, it's a great time right now. It's exciting, it feels like something new is happening, so we're just grateful to be a part of it. Unifying all these experiences is going to be really important in the gaming space, and the fact that they're recognizing that and bringing that to back to PC is uh, really important for developers like us. If you're developing for console or you plan to develop for Xbox One, I, I can't think of any reason why you wouldn't want to develop for Windows 10 as well. Cool. Those are just a few of the uh, great games that are going to be coming to Windows 10 PC via ID at Xbox in the coming years. And how cool is it to see the Battletoads making a little guest appearance in, uh, in Shovel Knight? I uh, you know, wonder we'll see them next. Anyway, today we have five ID at Xbox partners who are going to be showing Windows 10 demos down on the show floor. Um, you can see them right there, Shovel Knight, Pinball FX, uh, IDARB, Siegecraft, and Super Dungeon Brothers. Uh, please definitely head down, check out the games, and please talk to the devs about the process of coming to Windows 10 with Xbox Live and Crossplay, what their experience was like, and how it's worked for them. 
Thanks, everybody, and I will see you at the show. Bye. Just so we're clear, I had nothing to do with that Battletoads placement. That wasn't me. Uh, you know, one of the things that's been great as we watch this program build out, the ID program, and as people have asked us about, you know, the indie bubble and all the games that are coming, the excitement that we've seen as we've been able to unify what we have on desktop with what's going on on console and so many of those games trying to reach the, both of those audiences, it's actually really shown, shown up as a strength for us on Xbox as we're talking to people about where they want to develop their games and how they want to bring them to market. I think the Xbox ecosystem will see more games through the work that we're doing with the IT, ID program across both platforms, definitely in the indie space, but I think that's true across the board. Games that maybe had looked at the business model on console and standalone and said, it's, there's not enough people, it's not the right space for me, but as we're bringing the two and, and enabling somebody to deploy and sell to both audiences, it's really opened up the excitement on console as well, which, which has been great. Now, we want to talk about gamers, and I talked about games that we want to bring and make sure that people have great games available on all the devices, that they're able to stay connected and play with who they want to play with. People might have seen us play up here with these wired controllers. Uh, and also, uh, like input is really important here, and we think about the input as you're developing your games. Uh, Soon, later this year, we're going to be uh, releasing a wireless adapter for Windows that's going to allow all of your Xbox One wireless peripherals to work on Windows. So you'll have the same for the consumer. You buy the controller, it works across both platforms, and we'll make a commitment that all of the devices that you, wireless devices you're buying for your Xbox One going forward will continue to work and we'll make those work on PC as well. So as you think about input mechanisms that you want to use in your games, we want to make sure that you see that input isn't a barrier to you dealing with both platforms. And obviously we have to think about input modality across both, and it remains a core commitment to us that users should be able, gamers should be able to play the way they want to play uh, on the device that they're on. And for game developers, if you want to segment the world out where controller people only play against controller and keyboard only play against keyboard completely at your discretion, not something that we're going to mandate, but we've definitely found in co-op games and games that people just want to goof off and play together, let maybe less hardcore competition, that people having the ability to play, whether they're friends on a console, an Xbox, uh, or they're on PC, has been great. I'm going to switch gears. It was uh, Gamescom of this year. I had a meeting with a local developer, and it's always great when, when we're able to meet with somebody, uh, a studio that's nearby. It's funny that it was in Germany at this point. Uh, but it was a new game, a new game that's being developed. And they said, we're, we're building this game, and we're going to ship it on Windows, and we want to put it on console. So we want to talk to you about what it means to bring this game to the Xbox. And it was an interesting time as we were forming our vision for really gaming across all the devices. We started a longer conversation about what would it mean to partner on this game across both Windows and console to help launch, hopefully, a great new franchise uh, from a team that'll work with us as we're building out this ecosystem. So this is a team that's built with an amazing, talented team from multiple teams that have come together locally up in Bellevue, Washington. And to tell us more about this, I want to bring uh, James Finney from Motiga to the stage to talk about their game. Thanks, Thank Bill. You. <laughs> Motiga is a new studio, but it's full of veteran developers chosen because they're the kind of people who pour themselves heart and soul into their work. That's our philosophy as a studio, to look for talent, experience, judgment, and passion, and then create a collaborative environment where the team can work together to create something special. We believe that when a team's having fun making the game, you can tell. The joy comes through. So I'm thrilled today to show you Gigantic, a labor of love from Otiga. It's a fast-paced competitive game that's part shooter, part action game, part MOBA. A dynamic third-person battle where teams of unique heroes fight alongside massive creatures called Guardians. Like a MOBA, you choose one character and level it up during the battle. But our heroes are designed for players with differing gaming backgrounds and play styles. Whether you want the aiming and precision of a shooter, the clever skill interactions of an RPG, the furious pace of a brawler, 
or the tactical awareness of a support role, there's a hero for you. These heroes are brought together in a team battle where sniper, tank, healer, and rushdown characters all have a place. Gigantic isn't just about individual player skill. It's a game of teamwork and strategy, and driving your strategic choices are the guardians, one on each team. The guardians can help you in combat, can even move through the map to reshape the battlefield to your advantage. They're powerful, but they're also the ultimate objective. Defeat the enemy guardian, and you win. Here's our announced trailer. Today, I am excited to announce we've partnered with Microsoft to publish Gigantic on Windows 10 and Xbox One later this year. Players will have one Gigantic account across both platforms. You'll be able to go back and forth between your Windows 10 PC and Xbox One, or, or your buddies, and your in-game progression and purchases will always be available, whether you're on the couch with a controller or at a desk with a keyboard and mouse. We're also planning to support opt-in cross-device play. So if you and your friends want to get together and play, regardless of which systems you have, you can do that. Everyone at GDC is invited to come play Gigantic in the Xbox booth. Everyone at home, please check out GoGigantic.com and register for more information. All the design ambition and cool features in the world don't mean anything if the balance and the feel of the game isn't just right. And that doesn't just come from us. It comes from all of you. Together, we'll make Gigantic a better game. Thank you. I'm proud to be working with Motiga to bring Gigantic to both Xbox One uh, and Windows. I think it's critical for us to invest in first-party games and first-party experiences that are using the platform features that we want you to be able to take advantage of. As I think about a unique strength of ours, and there are other companies that do this as well, having our hardware organization, our platform organization, and our content organization so tightly intertwined as we're building out new and thinking about games like Fable and the work that they've done, now the work that we've been doing with Motiga, who work with Other Ocean, to make sure that the tools that we want to bring to bear to the masses of developers out there have been tested and they've been used and we've built games on them. As we continue our path forward, that commitment to us building first party content across all our devices, I think is critical to us perfecting our platform. I think it's a critical component to any ecosystem out there that we're actually out, we're kind of using our own tools, living by the own, our own functionality. And uh, it's, I'm just incredibly proud to be able to show new games like Gigantic here uh, and to be partnering with them, bringing them to our platform. When we think about the rest of this show, and as you go through and hopefully see some of the other Microsoft talks, the, peop the teams are all unified behind a vision that we've shared here to help us bring the best content and the best services to bear for you to use to develop the best games. We share a commitment inside of the Xbox team to deliver the best gaming platform across all Microsoft devices to enable you to build the best games possible. We're gonna have the Xbox Live SDK available so that you can take advantage of the full suite of everything that has been available on console to help expand the Xbox universe, including the work that goes on in Windows 10. You see the work that we're doing with ID, which is great. The ID program 
started on console, now including the work that we're doing on Windows, continues to bring more and more games into our ecosystem that's just great for developers, attracting more people, and those are more gamers that can play the games that you want to build. We're staying committed to our first party content lineup across all of these screens, some of them through partnerships, some of them through our internal studios, and that's a commitment I have to all of the gamers out there that us building those great first party experiences are critical to our long term success. And as I said, as developers, it's critical for you to know that we're actually in there with you using the tools that we're sharing and that we're asking you to take advantage of and rely on as you're building the games that you want to build. It's really the first time in all of my time in the Xbox organization that I feel like all of the parts of gaming for Microsoft have come together and we're able to show up with one of the largest set of shows and talks that we've ever had at GDC to show our complete vision and the pride that the team has in the work that they're doing and what you as game developers, the feedback that you'll give us and the way that you're helping us partner to bring out the best in what we're trying to deliver. You've heard about it on the console side from the time at least that I've been the head of Xbox, our commitment to listening to gamers, listening to the press, listening to the forums, and helping us craft what's best for our platform. As we expand where our focus is and we're delivering on more and more devices, the commitment remains the same. And James did a great job when he talked about Gigantic. We understand the services that we're building only are, are great if you help us make them great. There's nothing we can do by ourselves that help build out the ecosystem that we're sharing. The talks, everybody will go through in more detail about DirectX, about the Universal App Platform, about all the things that we've talked about, the Xbox Live SDK. And I encourage you to engage at a deep level with the speakers and afterwards ask them hard questions about the stuff that we're building, questions that you might have, maybe blind spots that we have. We are committed to this. We are committed to the gaming space. We're committed to building great content and we're committed to making Windows 10 the best windows that we've ever had for game developers and gamers. As the Xbox team, we're staking our reputation on it, we're putting our brand in front of it, and we're building the tools out there that we hopefully will bring it to uh, the expectation, the high expectations that both you have and the gamers have. So in closing, please visit the sessions that we have. I appreciate all that you've done with us th throughout the last year as we've continued to push our Xbox vision forward. I look forward to the ongoing dialogue that we will have as we build out a broader ecosystem across more and more devices. I want you to have a great GDC. I think it's a fabulous time in the games industry with so much talent and creativity going on. Please stop back by the Xbox lobby bar, come by our booth, see what we have to show, and I appreciate your time today. Thank you.